Donald Trump was finally part of a peace treaty, something he's been trying to insert himself in throughout his presidency. He played host on Tuesday to Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain at the White House, saying the agreements signed would change the course of history. UAE and Bahrain are not the first two nations to normalize their relations with Israel. Egypt was the first in 1979, and Jordan did so 15 years later in 1994. Not surprisingly, Trump took credit for bringing UAE and Bahrain to this point, with a White House statement explaining the success of these agreements could be attributed to the president's foreign policy vision and his acumen as a dealmaker. However, Trump himself said the three countries had to make the choice themselves. Trump promised that five more Arab countries were getting ready to do the same, and at other points in the day, he also said that six and seven or eight or nine were set to join, including the big ones. When asked if this included Saudi Arabia, Trump answered he'd been in frequent contact with King Salman and that at the right time, I think they will come in. Bahrain agreed to join late in the process. It was seen as a sign of approval by Saudi Arabia, as it's dependent on economic and security ties with the Saudis and coordinates foreign policy with Riyadh. The four men gave speeches on a balcony of the White House, then sat down together at a long table to sign the Abraham Accords. These agreements allow for diplomatic, economic, and other ties between them. These agreements also move the Palestinians to be less significant. For three years, Palestinian leaders have rejected Trump's efforts to bring them together with Israel. They have viewed the proposed agreements as only benefiting Israel and called UAE and Bahrain traitors to their cause. During an Oval Office meeting with Netanyahu, Trump told reports that he believes the Palestinians will eventually join the agreements. Obviously, we speak to them, he said, while also noting that his administration had stopped $750 million in funding to the Palestinians because they treat the United States so badly. The two Arab nations that signed agreements on Tuesday have never been at war with Israel, so they are not true peace treaties, yet both had thought of Israel as illegitimate. Arab states in the Persian Gulf have been moving closer to Israel in recent years with a desire to stifle the Iranian influence in the region. As Trump sat with Netanyahu on Tuesday before the signing ceremony, he spoke of his desire to create a deal with Iran over its nuclear program. This is something former President Barack Obama did, and Trump then pulled the US out of that agreement. He noted he's been communicating with Iranian representatives and that he told them, you should wait to see the US election first. He added that there is nothing. Iran would like to see better than Sleepy Joe Biden elected. But I'm going to make a much better deal, Trump added, predicting that after his victory, Iran will be very rich and very quickly. It was reported earlier this summer that Iran was trying to hack into the presidential campaigns.